I reckon that we've all got some kind of wasted space the back of our settees. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make use of it. So what I've got in mind is some kind of rolling cart that can go behind the settee to make use of this wasted space. It'll have a nice shelf on top and even a couple of USB charging ports. Before we start making any cuts, we first need to get some measurements. The first one being, how long is the settee? That's so we know just how long the cart can be. We also need a measurement for how high the back of the settee is so we know what height to make the cart. Then the only other measurement that we really need is how far away you have the settee from the wall. I've got this pulled much further away than we usually have it, so I'll get a measurement at the top, but I'm also gonna get a measurement from the bottom. I also wanna get a measurement from the bottom of the settee because in our case, our settee tape is at the back. Yours might be straight down, it might have a bit of a bulge in the back, a bit of a curve, so do keep that in mind and take it into account when you're getting your measurements. So with our measurements figured out, the first job is to get all the pieces marked out onto the piece of MDF. I'm going to start with the simplest piece and that's going to be the base. For me, that's going to be 1.2 metres long by 25 centimetres wide. To cut out the base piece, I'm just going to be using a regular hand saw. It's going to take quite a while. Obviously, a powered saw would be a hell of a lot quicker, but I just want to demonstrate that it can be done with a simple, basic hand saw. The next piece that I'm going to cut is one of the triangle side pieces. Now, this is 75 centimetres in height. The bottom measures 25 centimetres and the top measures 8 centimetres. So we've got a nice taper to it. Again, I'm just going to cut this with a handsaw. And there's one of the side pieces. So I went ahead and cut out another triangle piece exactly the same as the first one. I've got one more triangle piece I need to cut out, but this one's going to be a little bit shorter. That's to take in for account for the thickness of the base and the thickness for the strip of the MDF we're going to have sitting across the top. So with those pieces cut, we can start on the construction. For now, I'm going to put to one side the base, the top strip and the smaller triangle. Because before we get to those pieces, I'm going to first pre-drill some holes into the two side triangles. With the sides pre-drilled, I can now get them attached with some glue and screws. Now that I've got the side triangles attached to the bottom piece, I can get the top thin strip attached with some more wood glue and a couple of screws. Now the basic frame is constructed, I can add the smaller middle triangle piece. Now I've measured a gap of 40 centimetres and this is going to be the little cubby hole for me, but you can make this measurement whatever suits your needs. Now this is going to get attached in the same way with some wood glue and some screws in from the bottom and from the top. There's just a couple more pieces that I'm going to add to the structure now. The first is going to sit at the front. This measures 10 centimetres wide and it's just going to fit in place, again secured with some wood glue and screws in through from the side. And this will just act as like a little bit of a cubby just to catch some dog toys that we're going to store behind the settee. The MDF part of the construction is done now. I just need to go around and fill where I've put screws. Because I'm going to be painting this, it doesn't really matter what it looks like underneath the paint, just as long as it's nice and flat. You could do lots of options to this though. You could even put like maybe a fabric on the side, or maybe even a nice bit of wallpaper. It's whatever suits your decor. When I have got it painted, I'm going to be adding a solid wood shelf to it as well, just to add a bit of contrast. Thank you. 
So the MDF construction has had two coats of paint now, so I can move my attention onto the solid wood shelf. I'm going to allow for a little bit of an overhang either side, roughly one and a half centimetres, and then I can cut this off to length. So the shelf's cut to size, but before I put any kind of wax stain on it, I first need to drill a hole through, but the hole's going to be a little bit different. I'm first going to start with the 35mm drill bit, and I'm going to go down just over halfway through the top shelf board. I'm then going to switch over to a 30mm drill bit and continue the hole all the way through. The reason for this is because I'm going to be adding this USB hub to the top of the shelf. Now the size of this will fit through the 30mm hole perfectly, but it doesn't leave any room to attach the nut on the other side, so that's why I need the slightly bigger hole. We drill the bigger hole first because this drill bit leaves a nice point ready for the smaller drill bit to carry on. If I started with a smaller drill bit, it's really difficult to start the bigger one afterwards. I'm also going to have to drill a corresponding hole into the top of the MDF just to let the wires go through. So now we've got the holes drilled and everything's fitting nice, I've gone ahead and sanded this smooth so now I can apply some wax stain. So now that the stain's applied, I can get the USBs put into place. Now the top just gets secured in place with screws, no glue on this just in case we need to remove it later. I'm really liking how this is looking now, especially the contrast, I think the grey and this kind of walnut brown just works really well. Having USBs is going to be a lifesaver, but we still need a way for it to be able to slide in and out. So to do that, we're going to add four casters on the bottom. Now it's the moment of truth, will it actually fit? Only perfect. As well as the storage behind the actual settee, of course you can use the shelf to put things like a potted plant on, you could also add a lamp, any little knickknacks that you like. And of course let's not forget that USB charger. I'm really pleased with how this hidden sofa storage has turned out. We've got the little cubby on the right hand side, but with a big open space on the left, you're probably wondering what are we actually going to use that for? Well, we're not 100% yet, that's why I've left it so open. But at some point, I will probably be adding a rail, perhaps just a wooden dowel, and we can hang blankets over it or other bits and bobs, and it's just an ideal storage space back there. But the little cubby space on the right hand side, that's what we're going to use most of all. It's nice and easy to get access to, I don't have to roll the cart all the way out. Slide it out a little bit nice easy access to that storage space you could keep blankets there as well you could even keep something like a little hoover especially these battery powered ones these days but like i mentioned we're going to keep dog toys there keep some out of sight out of mind well out of our mind anyway oscar he's always got his mind on them so when he wants to play roll the cart out and he can pick out his favorite toy i really hope that you like this one if you did please give it a thumbs up Leave a comment down below letting us know, are you going to have a go at making one? Have you actually got some wasted space at the back of your settee as well? I think this is going to be a great addition to a lot of people's living rooms. So please do let us know in the comments if you're going to have a go at making one. If you haven't subscribed to On A Budget already, make sure you click the subscribe button and then click the little bell icon next to it. That way you'll get a notification as soon as you upload a new video. Thank you all for watching.